breaking news the ten horns are about to fight each other this is uh, this was just put up on uh, and I'm gonna put this up raw US uh, the RT news or RT America uh, US sends warships to Mediterranean amid Turkey Greece conflict conflict means a fight I'll let, I'll let you listen to a little bit of it. Uh, hi, everybody. Once again, I'm Rick Sanchez, and I want to welcome all of you who are watching us from all over the world, including those of you who are watching us on your phones using the portable TV app. We begin today with a conflict that appears to be heating up between two countries, Turkey and Greece. The conflict is about... Turkey is one of the... Uh... NATO, either they're NATO, NEU, or NATO, or EU. In this case, Turkey and Greece are both uh, members of NATO, and, which is the military, uh, how can I, joining together, let's, I can't use, a, memory escapes me for another word, but that's a good enough word. And um, the EU is their, the economic part of the beast. That's the beast. Um, NATO and the EU and America is a part of the NATO and they do deals with the EU as well if they're dealing with NATO they're also dealing with the EU that that makes up the beast the beast system what's the title what caught my eye US sends warships not cruise ships warships to Mediterranean, the Middle East. I said it in the previous video. I said something's going to happen where all these nations, militaries are going to stop what they're doing. I'm not talking about now. We know that World War Three is not going to hit all, all of this. This thing is going to be, um, you know, simmered down. And um, I guess the U.S. is kind of acting as a... Because what side are they going to take? The side of Greece or the side of Turkey? Because those are two... Those two nations are part of the beast, which ultimately Turkey and Greece, any of these EU nations that possess missiles, inter intercontinental ballistic missiles, they're going to shoot them on America any fucking way. Excuse my French. It says U.S. sends warships to Mediterranean amid, amid, now that's in the Middle East. You know, a little, let's say, southwest. It's not smack dab in the middle of the uh, Levant or the Fertile Crescent, Crescent, but it's within that area. Things are moving fast. Oh, and how do we know that this this is not going to usher in World War Three? Because they got to issue the uh, the mark of the beast, which is which is the microchip. So let's listen on. About oil and gas rights in the Mediterranean. Now, here let me try and explain it to you this way. Turkey says it has the right to explore for energy resources for its people and has actually sent in survey vessels escorted by warships to that area that you see right there on the map. Greece, for its part, is calling Turkey's action, quote, illegal. And there's even been a minor collision between two of the country's frigates already in open waters. What makes this story so odd is that both Turkey and Greece are members of NATO. And this is not sitting well with other European countries, including Cyprus. That you see there. You heard what I say in the beginning. Turkey and Greece are members of NATO. And they're also members of the EU. If I'm not mistaken, they are members of the EU. They are members of the EU. Both of these bad boys are members of the EU. They're on the map as well, where the oil and gas reserves are actually found right off their coast. Of course, this is also raising questions about Turkey's so-called neo-Ottoman ambitions. 
Turkey say they are simply being defensive to protect their own citizens, but European watchers say Neo Ottoman, you have the the old Ottoman Empire, which uh, sacked um, Constantinople when we were in power. So you have Neo Neo meaning new New Ottoman, and the religion of the Ottoman Empire was a religion of Islam, which is in conflict to the rest of the uh, EU and NATO nations, which are for the most part Christian. What's really happening with Turkey is that President Erdogan is concerned about internal stability and territorial integrity, which is why he's willing to take on, it seems, all regional rivals of late. But the question is, to what end? Right? To what end? Let's look at this. Here on the news with Rick Sanchez, where we believe it's time. And you best believe they're watching all of it. Like I said before, they watch all our videos. Because they'll get, we're like, we're spiritual weathermen. We're telling them what's going to happen before it happens. We're telling them that there's going to be a major world war. The war of Armageddon. We're telling them that the war of Armageddon is what's percolating right now. Trump got to get back in office. I would be surprised if Creepy Joe and the hoe you know, become the the the, the next uh, president, or Joe becomes the next president. I don't see him becoming the next president. I see Trump winning the next presidency or passing in an executive order. It could be a midst a midst of a, a major war where they have to uh, postpone the elections. And my uh, my belief, and I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. I'm not prophesying this. I'm just saying my belief is that uh, Trump, which I believe is could be a narrow, narrow Caesar, the Hellraiser, the man that burnt down Rome and burnt it on the Israelites. They say Christians, but those are Israelites. Is going to start that start that war of Armageddon. He's going to ignite. He's going to ignite that. That, that wick, so to speak, that bomb, he's gonna push the button, however you want it, he's gonna snap that whip. I believe he's the guy that's gonna get Armageddon live and popping. Anyway, what scripture scripture come to mind is uh uh Daniel the second chapter about the feet of them. It says uh partly strong and partly weak part partly iron and partly miry clay clay and being that the kingdom is partly strong and partly weak they're not going to work together and this conflict is over uh oil and land well oil is in the land so the US has to get involved the one uh, pursuant to a Daniel 7 chapter is more stout than his fellow um, Greece and Turkey are two of the fellows of the U.S. So the U.S. thinks it's more stout than its fellows. Meaning, U.S. thinks it's better. That's the big brother. That's uncle. That's big, big daddy Kane. That's the man. You know, that's the honcho. But I, I see things simmering, simmering down and things heating back up. But ultimately, and we hoping, you know, 2021, this man will be out of here. That they'll start to push the, the, the microchip late 20, 2020, early to mid. 2021. We we don't want we don't want this these these de these demons to go to uh, 2022. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna say shalom. I'm gonna say until next one, shalom.